What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here. And today we're talking about the top 10 games of all time. Last month, GQ had put out an official top 100 games of all time with the help of 300 different gaming writers out there. And honestly, it made me have an idea of my own head. I wanted to make a top 10 games list of all time, but I didn't want to do it alone. I reached out to some of your favorite content creators for their top 10 games. And after collecting the data, crunching the numbers, this list was born. Which games made the cut? Why were they so damn good? Let's dive into it. First on the list is the classic Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64. This game set the Mario IP to a whole nother level. Up to this point, all Mario games have only been 2D platformers, but once this game dropped, it changed everything. The story was pretty basic, but pretty much Princess Peach invited Mario for a cake, she baked him, but when he arrived, he finds out she was kidnapped by Bowser, and you need the Power Stars to save her. The story is basic, but what makes the game so fun was the map. Throughout each painting, you get to experience a mini puzzle in trying to get to the Power Star. Each level you go through has its own distinct music, and style that makes it different than the last. Bomb on Battlefield, Dire Dire Docks, Tick Tock Clock are just a few that still hit in the memories. The levels mirror every type of world you see set in the classic games, but they are brought now to a 3D experience. Even the simple gameplay loop saw some new additions to the classic Mario power-ups, with a different color box that grant Mario his own abilities. Turning into metal, going transparent are the basic ones, but to this day, Mario taking flight is still one of the most badass moments, truly legendary. Next on the list is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or other known as CSGO. The original release of CSGO was back in 2012, being a continuation of the Counter-Strike series. It originally was met with some criticism, but overall it was considered the perfect iteration of the series, building on what made the game fun in the past. The gameplay is simple, two teams, the terrorists and counter-terrorists fighting in an objective-based game mode. Either one side trying to save a hostage or plant a bomb, it really doesn't get as simple as that. But what's so good about this game is that anyone can honestly pick it up and play. I mean, for sure, you're going to get the ultimate sweaty matches and make it harder for newcomers, but literally everyone can understand the gameplay loop, which makes the game more open to all to at least just try to jump in. Weapons are pretty well balanced, and it honestly just feels perfect when it comes to the competitive nature of it. You can tell that the game is so good that when the only thing you need to update for it to be successful is for you just to adjust the stats of the weapons. This game is still one of the most played games on the Steam marketplace right now, and it's just killing it. With the new updates that are being added to it, it honestly feels reinvigorated amongst the fan base because it just shows that they're going to keep continue to play this game for many years to come. I've never seen a game that come out more than a decade ago and still has such a dedicated fan base as CSGO does have currently. Next on the list is Pokemon Silver. This is considered to be one of the best Pokemon games to ever be created, and in most people's opinions, it is literally the complete game. I can literally recount so many different memories about Pokemon Silver just for how many times I've replayed it and still create a different path. Identical to the basic Pokemon game premise, where you pick a starter Pokemon at a young age and you're sent on a massive journey to get all eight badges. The starter Pokemon for the Johto region are absolute legends. Totodile, Chikorita, and Cyndaquil are all viable options in this game with each of them having its own separate strengths overall. The second generation of Pokemon are considered to be the best in this series with its six legendary Pokemon including the legendary dogs, the unknown, and the box legendaries are all able to be caught. They honestly just have a crazy designs and are more diverse compared to the original crew. What I always found interesting is that the original Pokemon series had always foreshadowed the epic legendaries like Ho-Ho, being as impactful as they were in this game. The Pokemon League in Silver was infamous for being one of the most difficult in the entire series where you have to fight Lance with his multiple Dragonites that are built like a brick shithouse. Only the experienced Pokemon trainer has the chance to win. All of that is in the first half of the game where you then have to travel to the Kanto region and collect eight more badges and eventually take on your character from the first game, Pokemon Trainer Red. Legit, every Pokemon he has are on the next tier, basically overpowered, and you need to train your Pokemon to a level that it is very difficult for you to even compete against them. But once you finally get the chance to defeat them, it's honestly one of the biggest accomplishments of all time. It is honestly the best Pokemon game I've ever played. Next on the list is Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. For a lot of game journalists, this was considered one of the top five best games of all time. It overall had one of the best storytelling of any game I've ever played with as many diverse characters with their own backgrounds and multiple ways to conclude their stories. Winning Game of the Year in 2015, it was honestly a shoo-in in my opinion, and I thought it was had 
shown pretty stiff competition with both Metal Gear Solid 5 and Fallout 4. The story continues from the previous games, which can can get confusing for people if you've never played a Witcher game before, but they actually summarize the previous points honestly pretty well so you can get caught up and just jump right in. The best part has to be the multiple pathways that game can go overall. Every choice you make in the game has massive impacts on the major storylines and what the ending can actually be. This made The Witcher such a fun game because it has so much replayability to it and you can kind of see where a completely different plot line you can make on your second playthrough. For a game that released in 2015, it is one of the best looking games I've ever seen. The world is massive with so much to explore and side quests to complete, it honestly just feels endless. You can easily rack up around 100 plus hours in this game and it honestly will be enjoyable the entire time. The gameplay is basic being very similar to Assassin's Creed, but with the spells you can really diversify how you play especially when you face off against the various beasts where you have to really strategize how you go against them. The DLC stories honestly are considered the best DLCs I've ever seen in any game which only gives the story way more closure. By the end, I felt so sad to actually put down the controller because I really thoroughly enjoyed the ride, but it was definitely a pleasure to spend my time fighting alongside Geralt of Rivia. Next on the list is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Want to hear one of the most controversial statements ever spoken? A Star Wars game is an all-time great. I said it, I'm just going to stand by it. If you ever played KOTOR, you understand just how amazing this game was. The fact that this was originally an Xbox exclusive is honestly outrageous. Essentially, the game focuses on a side story within the Star Wars universe back during the Old Republic era when the Jedi and Sith were way more in population. In the start of the story, where the Mandalorians were invading the Republic, a renegade group of Jedis Revan and Malak face off against the evasion force, and soon later they will actually form their own armies to attack the Republic. But the game starts out really in a code of mystery. You wake up not knowing really what the hell's going on, but really that there is a Sith army about to attack your ship. Basically, Malak succeeds Revan as Dark Lord, and the story takes place right at this point, which is honestly crazy, and I don't want to spoil anything else just because it's just so damn good. The gameplay is round-based where you have a certain amount of moves you can make before the round ends, and enemies are fighting simultaneously. It basically has a very much Dungeons and Dragons style of combat. You essentially get to upgrade your character with different traits throughout your journey, customizing your method to play the entire time. Very similar to other RPGs, KOTOR literally creates the standard for story games to have multiple different branching endings and pathways that you can honestly create and the replayability is off the charts. It is considered one of the greatest RPGs of all time because the fact is it tells a fantastic story with the plethora of allies that you have to help you along the way. This was made by Bioware, which is the same group that makes Mass Effect, and you can clearly see that they share a lot of similar traits in both titles. People who have played this game will tell you that KOTOR really changed it all. They had meaningful characters, they had meaningful story plots, a whole world to explore, and honestly set the stage or really the standard super high for any new RPG game that was trying to break into the scene. Next is Halo 2. This, in my opinion, is one of the most impactful games of all time. Halo 2 is considered by many the best Xbox exclusive in history with his overall story and just epic gameplay that was so addictive. Being the successor to Halo Combat Evolved was already going to be difficult to match because of the fact that it was a game of the year and it literally made Xbox successful in the very beginning. But Halo 2 not only matched this success, but also went plus ultra. This game reached superstar status, basically setting the standard for story being on par with a movie level of storytelling and presentation. Trailers were shown in movie theaters, opening days were like the red carpet, Master Chief literally became an icon. Halo 2 story giving branching pathways between the Master Chief and the Arbiter really shocked a lot of fans, but it honestly made for one of the best stories of all time. The gameplay was upgraded from Combat Evolved, and the fact that Halo 2 was so successful, it really sparked the use of Xbox Live, which literally exploded. The music was well-renowned, art style set the standard for the future, and the game loop of Halo 2 literally made this game iconic. Anyone that never played Halo 2 back in the early 2000s, I feel like never fully enjoyed gaming because this was engulfed in everyone's minds, hearts, and systems throughout those early years. Next on the list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And I'm talking about the current Call of Duty. I'm talking about the Call of Duty back in 2009. Honestly, this is considered to be one of the best Call of Duties of all time, and it considers itself to be utter perfection. It's crazy to think of how this game was released back in 2009 just because it feels like we haven't gotten 
a cod to the same level since then. They were the master example of how to make an awesome story with top tier multiplayer. The story continues the plot from Call of Duty 4, which was already legendary tiered. Now we get to see our boy Soap McTavish as the mentor to a new group of 141 members. Introduction of badass characters like Ghost, Roach, Shepard, and Makarov really did give such a wide array of people to know, and each of them was interesting in their own way. This game had a lot of plot twists that really kept the story extremely engaging, which honestly was hard to come by, especially in CODs nowadays. Literally, there were so much epic moments that are just so synonymous with this game that defined the entire series as a whole. No Russian, Shepard's betrayal, all so well told, and it really elevated COD to the next level. Multiplayer also had one of the most fun experiences, in my opinion. Maps like High Rise, Terminal, and the ultimate 1v1 map rust all felt like they were well balanced and give you multiple ways to combat enemies so it never really feels boring and it's pretty much open the weapons also gave the game such a great experience too with the fact that they all were pretty different and they're just so many different ones to try but weapons like the scar the acr and intervention they literally are perfect i honestly had so much fun playing modern warfare 2 back in the day that it, a lot of those core memories are really revolving around this game and i still cherish them to this day. Next on the list is GTA Vice City. One of the best overall GTA games of all time, released back in 2002, the story really takes place or really gives the vibes of Miami Beach during the 1980s when there was the entire drug wars going on during that era. It basically gives off the vibes of movies like Scarface or Miami Vice. The overall music, open world, and story were basically top tiered, being nominated for Game of the Year back in 2002. The story followed Tommy Vercetti, who was voiced by the late great Ray Liotta. When he was recently released from prison, he's basically now tasked to oversee a drug exchange with local drug cartels. But when they get ambushed, Tommy and his crew basically have to go out and try to find out who attacked them and try to create their own sort of drug ring within Vice City. And with a lot of fun combat, great map, and just fun music to go along with it, it just feels like it's just a constant kind of train of fun. You can literally put in sheets to unlock many different weapons and vehicles that just gives you so much mayhem that you can play around with. And the fact that when you can do that, it just makes the fun just so much more enjoyable. All the music of this game gives off that 80s vibe and it literally fits the art style so well. GT games relatively always had a very good story overall, but when Vice City was introduced, it made people always recognize that as one of the top tier games of the entire franchise, matching it closely to San Andreas or others. But a lot of people will tell you that Vice City is number one. Next on the list is considered to be one of the overall best renowned games of all time on Metacritic, OpenCritic and others. And that is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Literally every Legend of Zelda game usually performs to a top tier with excellent storytelling and just an overall fun experience. But Ocarina of Time is considered the best of the best with the story, level design, music, and just concept itself. Ocarina of Time sets the Legend of Zelda games into the 3D format, which creates a trend for every future game in the series. A lot of the similar concepts we've seen from the previous games in the series have been brought back for Ocarina of Time, but what they do is they kind of make them way more unique and they bring them to life in this new 3D formatting, which really just becomes memorable. Link being part of the Korok village, being seen as an outcast that is then destined for a bigger purpose when he finally does meet Zelda, makes the player feel like they have a bigger mission overall. But once the first section ends, the whole story takes a turn for a more darker side that makes Link have to use the Ocarina of Time to travel to the future to stop Ganon's reign of terror. From this point on, the story does really open up, and a lot of the aspects of open worlds that we see today were actually introduced during this game. The main quests have you go to many different areas with each with their own dungeons, and they have their very unique style, and, and honestly, it was just a lot of fun to progress through. The music was next level, and each track is just, just top tier, where you can honestly remember every single song that they drop because it's very unique for its own location. Boss battles are epic. The storytelling for each level only expands the lore of the series. Many people consider Ocarina of Time the Legend of Zelda that was the most complete and very little to rag on. It is considered a perfect game to a lot of people. And honestly, I feel like I can't even disagree with them. And before we get to our number one game of all time, I gotta say that the fact that this list was so difficult to make, there were some games that we had to exclude. So here are our honorable mentions.
Number one on the list is the legendary Halo 3. Many consider this the most complete game of all time. Having the master level of an all time great like Halo 2 was already going to be extremely difficult because of the fact that it was so well acclaimed. But Halo 3 literally takes the greats of Halo 2 and only improves upon them. Being the first Halo on the Xbox 360 has been met with major expectations since it was on the next gen. The visuals really are S tiered overall and can even match some games today with how well the lighting was done. The story has one of the greatest endings I've ever experienced of any game I played and they literally had a masterful art of storytelling. The overall story experience is considered perfect with its movie like plot with constant twists and with every mission feeling like it has major purpose. Chief and Arbiter on Honestly, the dynamic duo and even to this day they are beloved as major characters that are recognizable in all of gaming. The multiplayer honestly is the most complete experience I've ever played. By the end of its time, 24 total maps overall with all DLCs included and it's honestly surprising because most multiplayer games today can't even reach that level of maps. Weapons were balanced and every location was diverse giving players a wide array of experiences to enjoy. Weapons like the gravity hammer were iconic and are recognized throughout the entire gaming community. Modes like infection were first created in Halo 3 which were so fun and they're actually taken and reintroduced into most FPS games today. Halo 3 was considered the best multiplayer game on the market for so long with over a million active players daily back in 2007. It honestly was such a beloved game that it had the perfect balance between ranked and social playlists and make you feel like anyone can pick up the game and play. With the Master Chief Collection being made, it allowed for Halo fans to get back into playing classic versions of the franchise, and Halo 3 is the most played of them all. Back in the day, Halo 3 had such an impact on my daily gaming experience, and when the server shut down last year, it felt like it was an end of an era. It was the most complete experience, and most fans will recognize that Halo 3 deserves to be considered to be the best game of all time, due to the fact that its story handled it so well, the multiplayer was extremely fun to play, and just the experience of the art style and the way that you go through this story just feels like it's perfect. Thank you everyone for watching. I do need to give a nice little thanks and appreciation to all the content creators that have contributed to the list. Obviously, it was very difficult to narrow down the top 10, but I do need to give, give a shout out to all those that did contribute. The Act Man, Act Bro, Kevin Coolax, Paragon Mitchell, Arash, Captain Charisma, Frost by MN and Footed Ghost. I always appreciate your help in contributing to this video. And this is my official list right here. What do you think about your top 10 games of all time? Do you agree with the list? Do you disagree? Which games do you think deserve to be on it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you like this type of content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.